Alright guys, Tactical Bit here back again today. Hope you're all having a fantastic Sunday or whatever day you're watching this. Few things to discuss today. I'm going to be recording two videos today and one of them will go up tomorrow. Um, tomorrow's video is going to be talking about the esports bubble as I see it and the potential that Call of Duty and the CDL will have in that. So hopefully you guys enjoy that video as well. That'll be coming out tomorrow. Definitely an interesting topic of discussion. Today there's a few more things to discuss. Of course, yesterday we talked about the COD burner out and, you know, how supposedly Edgar Rich guy has been exposed or you know potentially as the cod burner nothing confirmed but it does seem kind of likely sensor goes into more detail about it today and his side of the story so um definitely some interesting things to discuss you know the cod burner just to keep it very clear for you guys not know basically a guy behind the scenes whoever he might have been has been leaking information to the public effectively and some very personal confidential information and i'm not necessarily saying that was a good thing but in terms of the development of this channel without the cod burner giving those leaks on the new optic roster and the like back in september time this channel would not be what it is today so um we owe some thanks to some degree so anyway let's hop right into the video here like if you guys enjoy subscribe if you are new as always i would greatly appreciate it and we have an interesting situation with pentagrams so this guy he was on mazer gaming at uh, i'm pretty sure he was on mazer at the city of anaheim event where they lost to mind freak in the open grand finals now this is what he tweeted yesterday well got trolled by elevate in interesting and then dropped from my team guess the year is chalked was a fun year now okay very very strange now spoof says this not going to shed light on the situation because spoof that they're now not on maze they're on a team called hybrid gaming um i just want to say i love my organ all the people affiliated with it so this is the team of panda stamino and bz and spoof they were playing with pentagram at uh, anaheim but the situation has changed because spoof says the following this is effectively the story from his perspective. Of course, there's always two sides to a story, but Spoof seems a pretty stand-up guy in general, so uh, we're going to go through this. Three weeks ago, we heard a rumour that Nate, which I'm guessing is Pentagram's real name, was going to get called up to Elevate for Lacefield. Now, this is rumoured to maybe be for Emery's or something like that, but supposedly for Lacefield because they were playing poorly. We told him to hit them up at the time and find out if it was an option because Pentagram was Elevate's substitute that they designated for this little, you know, the rest of the season pretty much. Now, I'm, I'm thinking maybe Elevate were trying to do a similar thing to what Gen G just got away with, with, well, not necessarily like they shouldn't have got away with it or anything, it's within the rules but you know when they subbed out um, Nagafen brought Spacely in and then swapped it round at the end of the week even though they didn't lose a single match we talked about that a few days ago so maybe Elevate were thinking of a similar thing we all said we would support his decision no matter what as long as it didn't happen right before the event today July 13th five days before we leave for the event CW Miami in the middle of scrims, he says out loud, haha, Profizi just DM me, I don't know why I said it like that, um, asking if I wanted to scrim to see if the team is good. About 30 minutes later as the map was started, he disconnected from the team speak, so we all didn't know what was happening, we had assumed he was speaking with Elevate. I come to find out he was a, he was supposedly scrimming with Elevate, appearing offline without saying any word to his teammates, but asked what he should do to our coach Ronin. Ronin told him the positives and negatives, and basically said it's his choice, and he should do what's best for him, he scrim with elevate for a couple maps to find out spencer said no to the trade now spencer i'm guessing is spinner spence at uh, mlg so it looks like mlg said they can't do this trade for whatever reason um which i i suppose kind of makes sense very shortly before uh miami or whatever and then DMs our group chat what had happened when we'd already hit up a replacement for Pentagram in the team and our replacement informed his team he was leaving for us. So in a few within a few hours all this stuff went down. So all said and done we were left out in the dark of decision making and we had to make sure we had a plan for the event. So we did. End of the day it's not our fault. Nate was down to play with Elevator not our fault. MLG said no to the sub change. Also if MLG approved the trade we would not be talking about this and we'd all be congratulating Nate on joining Elevate for Miami and Champs. Uh, but that's not not what's happened we're doing the best for us none of us are comfortable playing with nate after all of this so we moved on bottom line i love hybrid and everyone involved etc 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 so interesting i don't know which which uh, side of this you feel like you should land on i'm pretty much on the side of the team here i would say i feel like if pentagram if this is true of course there's always two sides to the story you know how it is but you know if pentagram leaves has this opportunity with elevate that's fair enough but it's obviously a risk to leave your team and it makes sense that the dynamic 
dynamic of the team would probably be a bit different with him returning. Now, definitely a very talented player, though. So I don't know who their replacement is. I don't think that Spoof really tweeted about it because in this tweet he did relatively uh, recently. None of these players, I believe, are the replacement. These are his three teammates. And then these are um, related to hybrid gaming, the organization that they're going to be playing under. So yeah, interested to hear your thoughts on it, but like if Pentagram isn't playing for the rest of the year, that's going to be interesting because um, he was a pretty big name talent that people were talking about in the open bracket at Anaheim. So um, well, we'll have to see how it goes. So Killer goes on to say the following. This is unrelated, but I thought I'd bring it up because it's just so mental. Um, it's Killer at his best, really. No, not one to sit here and boast about myself, but how am I not on a league team? Are people really this blind to greatness? Last league team to pick me up was Dream Team, and I led them to a finals and put 11 racks in their pockets. Mind-blowing, honestly. And uh, Parasite tweets out the following. What fool, you play with notable players and still haven't done anything in years. Funny when I tweeted this, it reminded me of you and almost didn't send it. I'm better than you on my mama, dog. Um, Killer's just so delusional, man. I don't know even what to say at this point. Like, in fairness to Parasite, he may not be the best player in the league or anything, but he's put himself out there and he's put himself in a good position to get on a league team and making decent money of midnight. Like, what the hell is Killer doing? Do you think playing wages with, like, Embos is gonna be enough to get you on a league team where there's, when there's cracked out 18 year olds who can do all the hell they want and, uh, have a much better schedule and much better discipline than Killer does? So I was just kind of mind blown at this. Um, like, he's got two kids and, um, you know, what can we say? Best of luck, but seriously, like, you really think you're going to get in a league team slash mind flame? So, moving onwards, I thought I'd mention this very quickly. The City Bill Finals begin Friday of Miami, of course. Who will end up with the Astro Gaming MVP when it is all over? Be interested to hear your thoughts in the comment section below um, if, you're, if you're interested at all. But yeah, who is going to get MVP in Miami? Of course, it depends who wins. Pretty much the, um, the team that wins is going to have an MVP on it. And, well, my money is probably still on 100 Thieves. They should be the favourites. I'm going to say Kenny MVP this time around. Uh, but yeah, interested to hear your thoughts down below. Of course, if another team wins, then one of their players will get the MVP. Let's put it that way. So yeah, this is what Parasite says as well later in the day. If you want Vision Pulse to not bug out, I'm not exactly sure what bug he's talking about, but um, apparently you have to get rid of all your camos and customizations and then this Vision Pulse will not bug out. So if you guys are having any issues with it playing, um, then keep that in mind, supposedly. So Fury Gaming announced a team at Teddy Rex back in the back in the business, playing with Rambi again, Gindroid, Glow Frosty, and um, yeah, Drama. So interesting team. They're going to be at Miami. Looking forward to the event, of course. So yes, let's move onwards to this sensor stuff here. Um, Taylor Keating's tweet has uh, since been deleted. But yes, this is what Sensor says about the cod burner. This cod burner dude was sitting down with me and Krim at Seattle last year and told us he worked at Goldman Sachs. So this is Ed Gurr, the rich guy that we were talking about yesterday. My uncle was a VP at that company. Um, you know, Goldman Sachs, if you guys don't know, huge investment bank, global name. And when I asked him about his name, he told me he didn't exist. So interesting, because the cod burner, if he is indeed this rich guy Edgar person, and was in fact making a post about himself, revealing these details about he's worth $650 million, he sold his technology company, so he also works at Goldman, even though he's, you know, the, the guy, this guy's story doesn't really add up, right? And um, this honestly makes a lot of sense in terms of why a lot of pros haven't been talking about who cod burner and the rich guy is. Because when they did those investigations, you thought that if the cod burner got exposed, like that would be it, this person would have been ousted from the community. But given this guy is big money and uh, he's bought, you know, a ridiculous amount of people, like, you know, they go to dinner together, rich guy picks up the check at the end of the night, you know what I mean? He's definitely done that with a lot of the optic guys, so it makes sense why they're not so eager to be like, oh, like, egg is the, uh, egg is the cob burner, I better, you know, not too much incentive to really wrap that out. To elaborate, when I asked the cod burner if he knew my uncle, his response was, yeah, that guy's a douche, and immediately changed the subject. I knew right then and there he was lying. So, um, well, anyway, just to go back to this, if Edgar did work at Goldman, then it's not necessarily like it is impossible. Like, even, obviously, Goldman has a ridiculous amount of employees. It's not necessarily saying that, um, you know, 
Sensor's uncle would have necessarily known if the guy did or did not work there. Possibly you could look it up probably in the company database, but um, you know he doesn't go into details on whether or not that did happen at all. So uh, so yeah, fair play. Moving onwards here, then he tried paying for dinner. I didn't let him give me a dollar. Everything about him screamed fraud. I don't want to get any of my longtime COD friends to get involved with people like him. So um, well, this is interesting because this guy's been around the scene for a little while now, over a year, talking to even trying to get the optic guys on board and. Um, um, you know, he's obviously got big money behind him. If it is the cod burner and he has been doing these shady things, then obviously it shows the kind of character he is, I guess. Uh, moving onwards here again, I'm not under any NDA because, you know, apparently a lo lot of pros that Edgar has had interactions with, or Dexter as other people seem to call him, um, apparently a lot of pros have NDAs, which are non-disclosure agreements, which effectively mean um, you can't say anything about what we discussed crazy that uh, really those would be in place but I don't want this guy involved in our community whatsoever. I'll do whatever it needs to be done to make sure of that and uh, yeah, once again, since uh, um, I don't want to fraud tampering with my friends. Once you start getting caught up in the frauds, you eventually suffer in the ends and since it follows it up with this one, this Codburner BS needs to be put to bed. Read my tweets from today, which we have done, and uh, make your own opinion. I'm going to go to the Goldman Sachs directory to get actual evidence that this guy is a fraud I hate seeing people being taken advantage of. This needs to stop. So Sensor is putting his foot down and uh, he's going to take on the Cod Burner, baby. It's, uh, we need another Logan freaking Paul versus KSI fight, but for Sensor versus Rich Guy. Because, um, yeah, I mean, Sensor's jacked, but Rich Guy, he is he is six foot three. He's, he's a pretty big geezer. So um, it, it'd be fun to see them in the ring. So before we end the video, I thought I would leave you with this copy pasta that I'd read out. This came from uh, Reddit yesterday, which I thought was pretty funny because it came off the back of these tweets about Sensor at Goldman. So I'll walk you through it. I don't work at Goldman or know anyone who does, but a friend of mine gave a presentation in their New York office last April, I think. He said he walked in and the office felt really uncomfortable. Turned out that turned out that Sensor had showed up that morning in a three-piece suit with the arms cut off and two blender bottles full of half-protein, half-cherry limeade game fuel, one for each hand. He'd sat down in the CEO's chair and put his feet up on the desk and somehow got his highlights up from, I think, Nashville 2014 on the telly. Anyway, some poor secretary tries to tell him that the CEO is going to get there and being unhappy and Doug wheeled on it, slid cancelled two within two inches of her face and whispered, who the hell are you challenge, bro, right as the CEO walks in. Game respect game, I guess, because the CEO looked at him and said, blimey, today is chalked. Doug Faye's sense of Martin. I just got a $74,000 renovation on my backyard in Westchester, me and TJ are breaking the spoons out, you in? To which Sensor responded, not without the bloody lawn furniture, looked my friend in the eye and said, you tell Paul House whatever the hell he is, head to head finals, then he jumped out the window and disappeared. The whole day was kind of weird after that and apparently the CEO hasn't been back in the office since, so um, thought that was a funny little story that this guy put together and uh, I just love this bit, he got his highlights up from Nashville on the telly at his peer class. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, like if you did, subscribe if you're new as always, thank you so much for watching as always and I will see you next time.